Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's great to see so many people logging in to this event today. So happy that you're here joining us. My name is Magna Gerardi. I'm the event manager here at Book Larder in Seattle. Um, we're really excited to be speaking with Sarah Kiefer and Zoe Francois about the brand new book, Baking for the Holidays. Um, we'll welcome them both on screen in just a moment, um, but I'm going to wait for our numbers to level off before we officially kick things off. Um, I'm here in Seattle. Uh, Zoe and Sarah are in Minneapolis. Where are you listening from tonight? Hi, Diana. Diana is listening from Houston, Texas. We've got Chris in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Kara is from Indiana, Leslie in New York City. Thanks everyone, so nice to see you here. We've got Maryland, LA, Austin, West Virginia, Buffalo. Oh my goodness, it's so great to have all of you here. Melbourne, Australia, wow. All right. Uh, well, like I said, we'll give this just a few minutes before we welcome Sarah and Zoe um, on screen to talk about baking for the holidays, but again, my name is Meghna Gerardi. I am the event manager at Book Larder here in Seattle, and um, we are happy to continue doing virtual events at this time. It's been really wonderful because we're still able to welcome in authors from all over the country and all over the world. So thanks for continuing to join us from wherever you are here tonight. Um, like I mentioned, we're here to talk about Thank you for the Holidays by Sarah Kiefer. Um, Sarah's gonna be joining conversation by Zoe Francois and I'll hand it over to them in just a moment. Um, we will have time for questions. If you have any um, questions for either Sarah or Zoe, you can drop them into the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. There are two little bubbles there. Um, we'll get to as many questions as we can towards the end of the events. Um, so do drop them in there um, so we can keep track of them. If you'd like to chat with other audience members or share your general feedback, you're welcome to use this chat function that a lot of you have already dropped your uh, locations into. So um, continue to feel free to use that as a tool tonight. Um, we do have copies available um, at booklarder.com. You can support this virtual author talk by purchasing your copy from us or from your favorite independent bookstore. Uh, we really appreciate your support and I just think this is a fantastic book for the holidays, super giftable. Um, all right, I will put a, a message or a link into the chat for anyone that's interested in, in purchasing a copy. And um, also, if you know anyone that uh, is not listening in tonight, but might like this author talk, um, it will be posted on our YouTube channel within 48 hours. So keep a lookout for that. Um, if you registered for this event, you will receive a link to the uh, recording directly um, from Zoom itself. Okay, so um, before I hand it over to Sarah and Zoe, I'm just gonna read their bios real quickly. Um, Sarah Kiefer is the blogger behind the Vanilla Bean blog, a contributor to major food publications and author of 100 Cookies. Her recipe for bang the pan cookies went viral after she introduced it on the New York Times website. It's delicious and ingenious. In addition to writing her own books, she also shoots photography for other cookbooks, including Bread and Five with the authors of Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day, and she lives in Minnesota. Sarah's going to be joined in conversation tonight by Zoe Francois. Zoe is the author of Zoe Bakes Cakes and the co-author of the best-selling Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day book series. She's also the host of Zoe Bakes on the Magnolia Network. Zoe was formally trained as a pastry chef in the Culinary Institute of America in New York. Since then, she's been the executive pastry chef at several Twin Cities restaurants, taught baking and pastry nationally, and her work has been featured in many publications, including the New York Times, Washington Post, Food 52, Today Show, Cherry Bomb, and Better Homes and Gardens. Zoe's portfolio of work can be found on her award-winning Instagram account, at Zoe Bakes. It's my very great pleasure to welcome both Sarah and Zoe to the virtual book larder. Thanks so much for being here tonight and chatting with all of our guests from all over the world. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming. It was so fun seeing where everyone was from in the chat. I know, it's so exciting. 
I love that about virtual uh, book tours. Me too. Is that people are from all over the world. I know. And, you can and they all came here to see you, Sarah. Wow. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's so gorgeous as everything you do is. And I have to say, it's like the perfect companion to your cookie book. I mean, I feel like everybody has to have your cookie book because it's absolutely essential. And um, and then this is a perfect companion. And I do like that they designed it. They both have the circle on the front. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, they're meant to be together. They are, yes. For sure. <laughs> and so did you, when you did the cookie book, did you know that this would be the next one? Like, did you have them in mind together? Yeah, so when I um, signed the contract for the cookie book, it was for two books and um, Chronicle oh. and we wanted to do a holiday book next, so. Yeah. Oh, so when you were doing the cookie book, you actually like were sort of thinking of these two as a series. Yes, yep. Oh. They're, yeah. well, no wonder. I mean, they really are sort of seamless together. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. And I love, um, I do always love your design and your aesthetic. And obviously your photography is oh, thank you. absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> well, thank you. So yeah. yeah, so I mean, I think because I know you so well, and we've worked together, and um, I'm lucky enough to call you one of my bestie friends. Um, but I think, you know, and I've seen you work, but I think people are like super intrigued and interested to know how a book like this comes about and like what it takes to create something like this. So like, how does it start for you? Um, well, this book was extra crazy because of COVID. So I had to like kind of flip around my normal cookbook writing routine. So I can get into that maybe at the end, but I'll say yeah. what I would love to happen for every book. Um, and I finally, I'm working on my fourth book now. So I feel like I kind of have a pattern, even though it's always a little crazy, but I usually just start hardcore recipe testing. I do that. My manuscript, I usually have anywhere from nine months to a year. I've had to finish a book. So I'm just testing recipes that whole time. And so is nine, when you say nine months to a year, is that your, the period that you're writing it? Or is yeah, that so from start to finish? That's when I'm just writing it. So editing always takes a whole another year. Um, okay, right. Cookbooks, yeah, they take two years basically to come out. Or right, that's been my experience. Um, so I just recipe test. I have like a small group of people I send the recipes to, but that whole year, except for like the last month, I'm testing recipes. And then that month, what I want to do is like during that whole year, I'm typing up every recipe when it's finished, you know, writing head notes as I go. But usually that last month, that's what I'm doing. So I know. <laughs> I still use pen and paper. So I have everything in, like I have piles of notebooks. I try so hard to be like online on my computer, but. Okay, so wait, wait, back up a second. I don't know if I heard you correctly. Do you do, you do all of your recipes on paper? Yes, I have notebooks. Me too. I have to write it. I have to write it. I have like just things crossed out, piles of notes. And then I go through and make like a final version in pen and paper, and then I finally type it up. So, but I can't do it on the computer. It has to be. Like I'm so, that. I'm right there with you, but I felt like um, I was probably the only one. <laughs> <laughs> like I I'm just like, to me, to, like, I can't leave that behind even though. I yeah, I mean, I feel like I can't be creative unless there's a legal pad involved. Yes, and like brand new pens. I always go on my like <laughs> pens to write because I always yeah. did that in high school too. Like you start school, you have to have your new pens. You yeah, know? The same thing. That's right. awesome. New book, no books. So I do that, and I send recipes out to be tested. Get my manuscript sent in, and then the editing starts. Um, and then I have with Chronicle, I. That's who I work with now. Um, my first book was with a different publisher, but the 100 Cookies, the holiday book, and then the next book are all Chronicle. Yeah. And so then they give me three months to do photographs 
Um, so in a perfect world, I'm also photographing while I'm recipe testing, but of course that doesn't always happen. So yeah, <laughs> but that always, yeah. I always like having those three months because then I have a chance to go through all the recipes again. And I usually have my first edit of my manuscript back. So I try to bake out of that so I can really look for any mistakes. Um, it's been a good method for me because there's yeah. always typos and random mistakes. And so I, and then I have my printed pages. So I go through that and test all the recipes again and shoot them. Yes. And then send all that in and edits. There's usually anywhere. I'm kind of crazy. And um, if my editor is watching, she's nodding. Because <laughs> I just like, I want everything to be perfect. And so I go through it so many times trying to make sure there's no mistakes. Um, so we go through a lot of rounds of edits. And then I usually get sent. Um, the printed, it's the photos and the recipe yeah. on pages. And that's very exciting. Yes. You go through all of that. And then you send that back with your corrections. And then it goes to press. And then you cross your fingers. And then uh, yeah, you have your and everybody <laughs> loves it. Yes. That's fantastic. You yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a similar process. Um, I have to say it's so interesting. And I, I don't know if you run into this, but um, doing the photographs I'm super interested in that because I um I try to do the same thing where where you're shooting as you're going in Minnesota in the this time of year so there's light. about three hours of light <laughs> there's no way like you just can't unless you've made stuff the night before like if you and then like frosted in the morning or whatever yeah. you just have this limited time and the light's so much harsher in the winter which sometimes yeah. can be really beautiful, but you just have the sliver of a window. So I try to do it in the summer. Yes. And my other book, two, these two books lined up where everything was, the photos were due in July. So that worked out kind of. Oh, perfect. so and that's like all day. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, my lovely. family, you know, is outside enjoying the summer. I'm like, because ah, it's, like it's a three season porch with yes. just tons of windows. So that's where I shoot everything. So I'm just out there watching them, you know, living it up. And I'm yes. like hoping a cake doesn't melt in the sun. <laughs> right. And pretending it's Christmas. Right. Too, yeah. Because this was all holiday stuff. We had to do that. <laughs> it's that yeah. Well, I, whatever you're doing is working and absolutely stunning. I mean, mm -hmm. you're sort of the bar that we all reach for so oh, <laughs> it's uh, seriously I mean it's just so beautifully executed and so tell me about the recipes like were you one of those people that always looks forward to holidays and tell me like I feel like there's people who bake because they had someone super important in their life who baked and they learned from that person. And then there's the group of people that learn to bake out of desperation because nobody in their life baked. <laughs> and if they wanted sweets, they had to do it themselves. It's kind of a little of both. Cause my mom, okay, my mom is amazing, but she does not like to bake or cook oh or be in the kitchen. Right. Um, <laughs> I think I even in the intro of this book, she calls the kitchen the worst room in the house. <laughs> hates it and now that like all her kids are out of the house they literally eat popcorn or go out to dinner this is your I mom her, look, ah. she's not watching I know she, she'll be like oh I forgot all about it <laughs> which is fine because then I can you know say this and not feel bad but she like she just hates it but she would try really hard to like do stuff with us and she did have like a candy making phase where you know you would, like, buy the really the multiple candies oh like, okay like, it's kind of like white chocolate. Yes, yes, yes. I know yeah. what you mean. I and thought you meant she was like making yeah. like all no. sorts of, I was like, in wow, the microwave. Like jump in. Yeah, oh, in yeah. the microwave, melting it. Oh, got it. Food dye in, and then putting it in a mold with a stick. And then okay. they harden. And we're like, this yeah. is so good, you know. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it was just, you know, it was easy. She was way into the mold. So she had like a hundred. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more like a crafting project. It was she loves to craft. So yes. this is- Okay, like, got it. Like, yes, that's awesome. We always did cutout cookies. Uh-huh. We would just hate because we would destroy them with too many sprinkles and it was a mess. And we don't, my sister and I would always get in a fight, but 
Um, <laughs> so she really tried. And I had a grandma who loved to bake, but she never like wanted to bake with us or share like and she lived so she just away. wanted to bake and give it to you yes. she didn't and want to was. like do the process with you yeah and I wasn't really interested and yeah she was, um, both my grandparents didn't have kids so they were in their 40s they were a lot older oh, oh so by the time yeah. I cared she had already passed away and I just oh didn't any questions yeah. so yeah 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 so we came out of desperation because no one else was really in our family you know, taking up the mantle. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just started, um, and I had started baking in college and really loved it. And so it just yeah. kind of out of that, I just started doing it, but yeah. yeah. So it was a little and so do you, did you develop your own holiday traditions yeah. around baking? Yeah. Yeah. And so my kids though, it's hard because I bake all the time for work so they're kind of like not into it <laughs> so it's really just me making a lot of cookies oh, that's hilarious. Cookies. that like is so funny be like sure I'll help and then they you know do a little bit but they just really they just want to eat it and they don't really care about the process because they see me doing it all the time yes well I have to say that my boys are now 20 and 22 and they're just getting into it and wanting to oh, help awesome. and learn, which I have to say is about 30 years sooner than I figured out that my parents were interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm just figuring out like my dad kept bees and they, you know, lived off the land and did all of these like super interesting things. I never cared. So I get it. Yeah. Know? I didn't until I was older either. And now it's, you know, fun to hang out with your parents. Yeah. 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 Just hope. And if I oh, asked just... them, they would do it, but I can tell they're not like super into it. Yeah. And then I get, my problem is like, cause I'm always testing recipes too, like in the back of my mind. So I'm like, we ah. have to measure this right. You know, and they're just like, let's just have fun. Oh, 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 to <laughs> just watch them sort of throw things in and be sort of. Right, so I have to let us me too, I have to back up. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know it's hard. It's hard yeah. not to want to control that process. I know. So I do yeah. try, I'm working on it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I know, it comes, it comes. Um, okay, so tell me about some of um, the chapters in your book. One of them is about gift giving. Yes. Um, so making things and giving them, which I think is, I mean, of course, everybody has to get the book and give that because that's sure. the best way. <laughs> like share the baking by giving the book so everybody can bake for themselves and learn how. Um, <laughs> but then you actually have a chapter about making things and giving them. So tell me about yeah. that. And that came out of to my mom when we did bake, we would always bake a ton and then send it to the neighbors. Uh, which, and I loved that. And they would always send us oh, stuff back to yeah. them. I love just the, everyone in their neighborhood, they all, most of them still live there. And so they still do that Amazing. every year. And so what, is that like a cookie swap that they would do or just different? Not, and yeah, like you have candies in there too is yeah yeah we mostly did cookies and she would always do pumpkin breads oh that were really that's good that's awesome and they would just have stuff like everyone just baked and so when you they'd see you coming you know with piles of stuff and you're like yeah hey, ready and you trade and so I've tried to do that with my yeah. own neighborhood like just passing out little boxes of cookies and yeah stuff and oh that. that's great that's I'm coming I want to live in your neighborhood you you can I'll bring one to you this year I can't I should have ah, yay that'd be awesome <laughs> but I always figure you're making so much stuff anyway yeah but you know how it is it's yeah. like Bakers always love it when other bakers make them things. It's true. It's like the best present. It's the best. I love it. I always love that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good for the kids, I think, to see like, okay, we're going to put a bunch of work into this and then we're going to go give this to our neighbors and friends. And yeah. It's yeah. It's a good way to just, you know, share something that you love. Yeah. Okay. So tell me like, when you are coming up with the concept, when the recipes and the concepts of what you want to put into a book, where did they come from? Like, is it, are you coming, are they things that you remember 
from childhood or how are you getting inspired? Um, yeah, so the morning baking is all kind of yeasted treats mostly and then some scones. Um, and we did, my mom would buy the Pillsbury cinnamon rolls yes. in the pan, and that was like the biggest, most wonderful treat. Yes. I always wanted them. My parents would never do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was like for holidays or special occasions. Like yes. Mother's Day. And they had orange ones too. Ooh. Yeah. So that, I just remember the smell of cinnamon in the oven yes. is like, amazing and my mom always had like tons of potpourri out too so there's like some of that smell in there too yeah <laughs> that's awesome but, so cinnamon rolls is like in my mind even though they weren't homemade it was like a huge yeah. part of yeah. celebrating and so I wanted to do those and I love making flaky pastries that's like my favorite thing is so it I, I don't know that I knew that love oh, well I have to say that there is there are the the um did, are they cruffins is that what I'm thinking in the back the last chapter oh um here I think I I think I landed on them yeah it's so you can keep telling them in a minute oh this this yeah. this this yes can the you cruffins. see that these right here so yeah, I came up with, it's a um, cheater croissant dough, which was inspired by a couple different recipes. Um, but basically it's croissant dough. And then instead of making the butter block, you spread the butter on and fold it. And it's, it's not like, you know, a perfect honeycomb croissant, but it still makes a honeycomb and it still gives delicious flaky layers. Yes. And when you're putting tons of sugar and filling in any way, I feel like you don't need the perfect butter block croissants and you're at home yeah. you don't have the um sheeter which I yes. love I know I know my own sheeter in my house just I know but this is a great way to make it and so um but I love all those flaky doughs yes so I wanted to include those um and I love scones so that was in the morning chapter and those are all things that I've made over the years for my kids too like on birthdays my kids for their birthdays yeah. would rather have scones or cinnamon rolls than cake than cake yeah. really yeah. isn't That's that, that amazing called. so did they request certain things for the books did they um, have opinions about it they do and they try everything um but they for this one, they didn't as much. I feel like last year was so crazy with COVID and they were yeah. just learning and kind of zombie children, you know, just like <laughs> everyone was just trying oh. to manage. And so I felt like the book kind of just came together in pieces, but yeah. it was yeah, all yeah, yeah. stuff that I felt like had some root in nostalgia or what I was trying yeah. to make happen for my own family now. Yeah. I mean, I feel that so much in the book. And I think that that's um, so much of what the holidays are for people. It's like you were talking about the, uh, you know, the um, cinnamon rolls that come out of that chub and stuff. And it's like, um, even that, like the sensory memory of a smell like that and nostalgia and, and just remembering our family and I feel like this book has so many moments like that, you know? Yeah. And um, I've tried to tell really... in the head notes some of those stories because I feel like yeah. it helps. Yeah. I mean, then that's one of the things about your books is that not only are the recipes like um, beautiful, I mean, really, it's just a beautiful book, but all, and they work. I mean, and that is something that is just you know, I mean, you, your books are always trusted, you know, I always know that the recipe is going to work, but also, um, and this isn't the way with all books is that your writing is so evocative and, you know, you just like elicit emotion in your writing as well. So it's like even recipes, um, you know, that you may not even know you want to make until you read the head note. <laughs> so, I love that. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Yeah, it's really fun. I feel like a lot of my baking is tied to nostalgia and like the feeling of that I want to go back to of like the first time you tried 
something yeah. new, or even sometimes I feel like the smell or the anticipation yeah. of the bacon in the oven is more rewarding than sometimes even eating it, you know? Yeah. But I feel like that's what I want to try to do in my head notes is create that feeling of the smell of waiting for something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you do that beautifully. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So tell me, um, you just said something that reminded me of um, this recipe I'm working on. <laughs> and um, I've made it, I think, like eight times. So tell me about the process of, um, I get the sense, well, I kind of know you, and I get the sense that you're a bit of a perfectionist. And I think that that works really well in our favor. Um, all of the people that love your books. Um, but when do you stop? Like, when do you know that a recipe is complete and done and ready for the book? That's a good question. Um, if I had my way, I'd still be writing my first book. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. It's so yeah. terrible. And like, I have, over the last few years, I've been diagnosed with OCD. Um, so that plays into it and I see it OCD is like a very complicated beast, but yeah, it has its strengths, which it, and it works in my favor in this it, case is that I am obsessive about making sure the recipe works. Um, so I have to, I've had to learn to cut myself off. And sometimes that's my editor saying, this book is good. Like, yes. let's let go. Let's yeah. just take a step back. Um, so most books, they've, Sarah has had to come in and say that to me. <laughs> But um, also what I look for, like when I'm making a recipe is when I take a bite, I'm in the present in that moment. And all I know is how good the thing that I'm eating takes. Like, yeah. it's just that feeling of like, there's yeah. nothing else. It is just this bite of whatever it is. Yeah. And that seems really dramatic, but I do look for that in everything. Like just that moment of like, this is a, this is what I wanted right now. Yeah. This is how uh. it's supposed to taste. And I know if it's not that, like it's, because my husband will be like, this is good. And I'm like, yes, but it's not good enough. <laughs> he loves you too much to like yeah, trust I it. I don't trust <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, well, so that's, that's what I'm always looking answer. for. Yeah, I love that. And there's lots of times, like there's, I have just piles of notebooks of recipes that I just haven't finished because I didn't get to that place yeah yeah, yeah. and so how does the how do your recipe testers fit into that like when you are you already at that point um in the process when you send it to them or yes. is it like I'm, sort of an evolution I 99% of the time it's done for me and then I'm saying okay. to make sure like it works in another kitchen in, in another, another oven because everyone's ovens are different and that does affect everything yes um, yes it but yeah have. so just making sure like this recipe worked there's no mistakes in the ingredient list because often they'll be like you know there's typos of course you know and just like making sure all that's together and that they liked it and if someone yes. has a really strong opinion like I hated this then I have to go back and evaluate like everyone has a different, you know, bar for right. taste or different preferences. So I have to take that into account. But. Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I know people are going to want to know, like, do you have um, a particular recipe that you always make at the holiday? Like you just, it's not, I'm going to just say Christmas um sure Without you know it. is there a recipe that says Christmas to you or and and it's not just this time of year for the holidays right I mean you have right. all different holidays in here but are there certain recipes um that evoke that particular holiday that you just can't live without well cinnamon rolls for sure like Christmas mm -hmm. morning I always prep them the night before and then we bake them off in the morning and that's our like family Christmas together yeah um and then also the peppermint bark like my mom is obsessed with that so I make like a triple batch of that oh that's give awesome. that to the neighbors and her but then also like just snack on that all the time yes yes um, those, so those are the ones on sure. the cover right uh, is that on the, on the bottom yeah, sorry yes yep. yes yeah on the cover, yes 
Yeah. That's I awesome. Those. Um, so yeah, the, and the cinnamon rolls, um, probably those two for sure. Okay. Yeah. Or Christmas. It's mint. It's cinnamon. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. And this, um, this pie, the grasshopper pie. Yeah. I just want it because um, it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and all the flavors. Right. There isn't anything in this book that I don't want. This lemon pull apart bread. I just saw, um, I feel like I just saw the entire internet make that <laughs> bread. Is that oh. right? Is there so I have to give a making? shout out because I know there's some members from the <laughs> Rainy Day Bites. Yes, I love them. Book Club. They are, they the are best. amazing. Yes. So they made the pull apart bread and there was like, I don't know how many people made it, but it was. Incredible. Oh my God. And they all looked absolutely incredible. So beautiful. So I beautiful. Was so, I thought, I was like, oh my gosh, it's such a great feeling. You know? I know. People well, make- I mean, that's true. It's, it's absolutely, I mean, I want to know why you write books. Like what I, cause I have an, I have like an idea because you just said something, but why do you do it? Is it so that you can write down these recipes and it's sort of like um, your legacy or what is, why are you doing it? (gasps) Did I lose you? You're frozen. Maybe she'll restart the video. I think, yes, maybe. And I, I'm not uh, sure she knows we're gone. <laughs> also, it's too bad I wanted the answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, on that note, maybe I'll just remind folks that if you do have a question um, for Sarah, or for Zoe, um, please do drop them into the Q&A button. Um, at the bottom of your screen, we will get to as many as we can. It looks like she's coming back. Looks like Sarah's going to um, to tap back into the Zoom event, and we'll resume. We were we were we were just joking about this before ah. we started. <laughs> I know it <laughs> happened last time too. Yeah, I don't know. It's oh, it's tradition, funny. I guess. It's it's tradition. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the sign her book is going to do really really well. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank goodness for Zoom. Uh, We can just click right back into our meetings and get right back started. Looks like. Uh, There she is. Oh my gosh. So, of course, again, this happened last time, but this time it was our (laughs) internet just shut off. So now I'm on my phone. I'm so sorry, you guys. That's okay. (laughs) Glad to have you. Uh, we were just singing your praises. It's okay. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't remember what we were talking about. I'm sorry. I was just like, why is she frozen? And then like, <laughs> and we were just joking about this. Like, oh. That is so funny. So I, I'll just ask you really quickly because I know everybody else has questions for you too. But um, I was just asking why you write cookbooks. Is it yes. for your legacy or or what? It, why, why are you motivated to do it? Because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I love the process. Like I yeah. really do. I love testing recipes. It just like sometimes it's frustrating, but it brings me so much joy to like, yeah. Yeah. work through a recipe and get it to be how I love it to be but it's also so much fun and brings so much pleasure to see people make what you've created and love it or yeah. not love it and tell you but you know like people are making your recipes yeah. and just participating in baking with you and it's it's so amazing it floors me all the time yeah I know I agree yeah. Yeah. It's I awesome. Love that. I love that. It's kind of like being able to, to share food with our really extended. Yeah. 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 And I have always felt like food has been a binder for so many things. It's uh, like flows through all of our memories on mm-hmm. some level. And so the fact that we get to like help other people maybe do that in their own homes with their own people, you know, like your family and your friends, mm-hmm. um, and be able to do that. It's just a great feeling. Yeah. And during the holidays. I love well. that. Yeah. It's perfect. In the book. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, 
we've got a, a quite a few questions um, okay for you sarah um let's dive into them all right let's go okay so let's see um sarah's got a great question what do you do with all your tester cookies <laughs> that's a good question um so before covid my husband is a teacher and so he would bring everything to work and Aww. they would look gone <laughs> And he actually had some of his colleagues bribe him, like slip him money and be like, if you get chocolate chip cookies, please come to my office. <laughs> Which I thought I was so that. funny. <laughs> um, and now he is back at school so he can do that again. Otherwise my parents, they live 25 minutes away and they will drive and pick up stuff and then like bring it to all their friends and pass them out to the neighbors or we give them to our own neighbors. So nothing ever gets wasted. It all gets um, eaten. It all gets eaten. <laughs> Let's see. Um, there were some questions in the chat. Um, Holly asks, Sarah, are you a self-taught baker or do you have any formal training? I am self-taught. I did work in some bakeries in college. I started at a coffee shop that made all its own baked goods and learned there um, and then worked at a couple more and also have sort of self-taught myself in my own kitchen. So it's kind of like a bunch of things, but I did not go to culinary school. So it's all been just either in like a place in a kitchen or in my own home. Lovely. Um, gives the rest of us hope out there. We can all. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see, Teresa asks, what is your recommendation regarding adding the best version of color, like your red velvet and green mint version? Oh, um, so gel, like um, food coloring gel works a little better because it you don't need as much and it has a more vibrant color. For the red velvet cookies, there's something online you can buy, it's called bakery emulsion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of bakeries use it, it's a red color. And it's a food dye, but also has a slight flavor in it. And a lot of bakeries use that in their red velvet. So it has kind of a distinct flavor. And I found that works really well. Not everybody likes the little note of flavor in it, but I really do. What is um, the note of flavor? I don't even, it's, I don't know exactly what it is, except that it's red velvet. <laughs> it's okay. vanilla-y and it's also uh, a little almondy, like just a little uh, bit. Yeah. Um, just, but not, it doesn't feel like almond, but yeah. it kind of has that same note as almond, um, but it dyes it really well. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise I just use this. It's hard cause you hate using so much food coloring in like a red velvet thing. So I don't, I do it every once in a while, but, um, but if you use a gel, you can use less. And I just kind of start with a little bit and then keep adding as I go. Do you have a brand? use it all the time Zoe food coloring no, um I yeah I tend to use pastes or gels just like you said because they're not yeah. as diluted so you don't have to add a lot more liquid to your recipe and you get more intense color but I've never not, heard of that um, um what did you call I have uh, <laughs> in my drawer so it's just this Oh, oh, it's actually a called red velvet. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Um, and then also the gel is not like the tube of gel you buy in the grocery store. It's like a special gel food coloring you buy. Like yes. Michael sells them. You can also buy it online, but just I wanted to clear that up so no one's buying those tubes and then getting very mad at me. Because <laughs> they do right. sell those in the store, the gel, yeah. <laughs> There are like so many, you, you have so many wonderful fans that want to know um, so many. You guys are the best for real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's, it's hard to pick a good question because a lot of these are really good. Um, okay. Um, Tucker asks, how do you start a recipe? Is there a flavor profile that you start with? It depends on the recipe. Um, I often like, I usually make, when I'm doing a cookbook, I have like a list of recipes I want in it. That's how I start. And then if it's something I haven't made before, cause now, like I've been baking for so long, I've made a lot of things. So I have like my recipe for things that I'm just kind of tweaking. 
but if it's not, I usually just, I have a ton of cookbooks. So I look through books, try to see what's the same, what's different in like, let's say um, chocolate chip cookie. We'll just take something simple. Mm -hmm. What's the same in every chocolate chip cookie recipe? What's different? What do people do? That's maybe a little different. What do I want in a cookie? Like I think about that too. Like, do I want it to be buttery? Do I want it to be crispy? And then I just start playing around with that and just tweak as I go. And when I'm doing a recipe, it takes anywhere from five to 30 times to get it just perfect. But I'm just like constantly tweaking and making. And then once I have it down, I make it a bunch more times just to make sure it's actually right and not some weird fluke. <laughs> How many times would you say you test a recipe before you're like? Yeah. I make something a lot of times, um, <laughs> like 20 to 30, honestly. Unless it's something that I've made a lot of times previously, like I know this base recipe works and I'm just kind of tweaking it or making it a little bit different because mm -hmm. I know I've already tested it a million times. Um, but if it's something new, I really want to make sure it works. So it's 20 to 30 times. Wow. What about you, Zoe? Would you say that's? Yeah, I mean, I, I the same. I think it's, you know, sometimes um, I'm building off of something I've baked for a really long time um, and other time. And sometimes like I'll have a concept um, that I'm in love with and I just can't figure out how to, I haven't hit that moment that Sarah talked about where I'm just in that moment with it. So then it takes a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll say like 30 is a pretty good estimate across the board. It's a lot, it's a lot <laughs> yeah. of times. Right. And then the recipe testers will take it over and then the process starts again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Speaking of recipe testers, you've got a lot of folks asking how they can become a tester for Sarah or so <sighs> Are you taking testers? <laughs> yeah, you could DM us on Instagram. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, please do. Uh, I actually um, have started hiring professional recipe testers. Um, and I do still use um, friends and family and people that I've met um, on on the internet, but i've I've started um, using um, professionals as well. Mm -hmm. um, just cause I need to make sure that it's, there's an art to recipe testing. Um, so yeah, both ways are good. Yeah. Can't hurt. Um, all right. So Lauren asks, in your opinion, what makes a cookie a holiday cookie versus a regular cookie? I love this question. That is a great question. <laughs> and I would say, I mean, you can say, well, if it has mint or it's a certain <laughs> color, but of course we, I think it's tied to nostalgia and what you maybe have memories of or love that you eat around your own holiday. So for me, like the peppermint bark, because I make it every year and I associate mint with Christmas, which I know a lot of people do, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say it's, you know, it can be very personal. So for me, like in this book, these are things that make the holiday sing for me in terms of baking, but it can be anything for you. That's a good, that's a really good definition. I think, um, uh, cause it is totally subjective, um, yep. for everybody. Taste is subjective. How you celebrate the holiday is so different for everyone. And it shouldn't oh be, gosh. there shouldn't be a label on it. It's whatever you want to make it. Completely. Um, let's see. We have some folks that are asking, um, if they had to bake one type of cookie from the book or one dessert from the book, what, what should they bake? That's a hard question. So <laughs> it would depend on like what for, I'm going to say if it's Christmas morning, I'm going to tell you to go with the cinnamon rolls because mm -hmm. that's what we're making. A dessert, the grasshopper pie. Oh my gosh. It's one that's really easy. It's a no churn ice cream base. There's meringue on top, but you could also cheat and do not cheat, but do whipped cream instead. If you don't want to sit and make meringue, you can totally just put whipped cream on top. Who doesn't um, want to sit and do meringue? <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. <laughs> you could, you know, like if you need to go buy a thing, a cool whip and just pop it on top, you can totally do that. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, like it's, it's the holidays. You've got to. Yeah, you got to cut corners if you need to. Exactly. To uh, <laughs> <laughs> no shame in that. There isn't. That's true. Okay, um, we've got a question from Jane. What is a sheeter? Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> so S H E E T E R for anyone that is listening. <laughs> so professional bakeries have sheeters that they run their doughs through to make them very flat. So they run it through again and again and again, and that's how they get these beautiful layers in their croissants because they're just these thin, thin layers. Um, so I always dream of having like just one that goes on my countertop and I can just run my dough through. And some people have done that with like um, pasta attachments mm -hmm. on your made. Um, you can stick a nice. attachment on and try to run it through, but they're not super big. So you just have these like little pieces of dough. I've tried it and it doesn't work. I just might as well do a rolling pin, but <laughs> Um, but that's what it is. And so they're really expensive if you're buying them for a bakery. And I haven't seen, I've looked for countertop ones, but they do have countertop ones. They do. Are they any good? Yeah. I've never tried yeah, yeah. It. There's some that are very good. I just, where do you store it? You know, right. <laughs> it's like, right. a rolling pin is so easy to store. I would just have it out and make croissants I know. all day. All day. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. All day, every day. <laughs> At least on, or on the Sundays, maybe. I don't know. Um, okay. So Mary Jane asks, does your publisher limit the photos for your books? Do you get to decide which recipes get photos? Could you tell us a little bit about that, the process of building a book? Yeah. So it depends on the book and the publisher. Um, for both of my books, for both my publishers, they wanted a picture per recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I did. So, and my next book will also have that. Um, I think a lot of publishers and a lot of people know like the picture helps sell the book because you see, you see what it's supposed to look like. It helps you be able to create the recipe if you know like, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like versus no picture. Um, so that's, that was in my contract. Um, some, um, but you know, printing pictures makes the book more expensive. So sometimes that's why not every book has, um, pictures for every recipe. It just depends on a lot of factors, but for my books, they had wanted that. And I was happy to do that because I know people really like to see a photo of the finished product. <laughs> yeah. And they're such fantastic photos. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think you want to get baking for the holidays, that's for sure. Um, all right, there's um, a handful of folks that are asking, um, do you have a favorite recipe in the book? I know it's kind of like picking your favorite child, but. It is. <laughs> I would say whatever I'm eating is my favorite, but <laughs> I think the cheater croissant dough, it's a little more work, but I love I love it. And you can use it for so many things. Um, not even just the recipes in here, but just there's other things too. You can play around with it. Um, and my next book is going to be morning baking recipes. So I will be expanding nice. on that dough in there. I'm very excited about it. Um, very crunchy. You heard it here yeah. first. That's the first time hearing of it. I'm very excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, Liz asks, when does your next book release? Do you have a release date yet? Yeah, it's spring 2023. So it's okay. a while. I don't I haven't turned my manuscript in yet. It's due in a few months. So I'm still working hard on that. Keep them coming. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see. I got there's just so many great questions here. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for being such wonderful participants. Um, there's a few comments that folks have left. I'm just going to read them out loud. Um, so Kathy says, so you're so fun to listen to and watch so much energy. Deborah says, you guys are the best. Thank you for the shout out. You know, our cookbook club, the lemon pull apart loaf was amazing. Um, and Jillian earlier said, I read the intro while waiting for a bus and it brought me right back home to Christmas with family and the love mm -hmm. that comes from being together. Agree with Zoe, Sarah's writing evokes many emotions. Oh, that made me 
a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Here's a great question from Jillian. Um, I'm curious about this one too. What cookbooks are you gifting this year besides your own? Well, for sure, I'm gifting Zoe's book, even yes. though of course, <laughs> this book is awesome and I'm not kidding. It's so good. Um, I, I also, I'm, I have right over here, I'm going to grab it. <laughs> this is what's so nice about being in your kitchen. Oh, so that's I know. awesome. There's a reach right out oh, here. Oh, yes. Yay. It's awesome. Dory's book, yeah. And this book is so. Oh, isn't it beautiful? I love this book. I agree. I can't read it. The recipes are so well written. It's so great. Yeah. She's amazing. Really. Yes. Yeah. Her milk bread, we've been making it over and over. My kids oh, are. Cool. Yes. It's That's so good. great. Yes. How yummy. Oh, yum. How about yes. you, Zoe? Are there any um, any books that you're gifting or excited about cooking from this fall? Speaking for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> I already have. <laughs> I love that. Yes. And Dory's book. I love it. There's so many beautiful There's so books many good right books. now. Yeah. Um, it's really, um, it's an exciting time uh, for cookbooks. I feel like there's this like super, uh, people are getting passionate about uh, baking and cookbooks mm -hmm. and supporting cookbooks and um uh, you know, uh, I think last year people really got in their kitchens and embraced new projects and mm -hmm. took on things that maybe they thought they were intimidated by and figured out that it was really just fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's great. I love that. Um, I, yeah. Oh, Zoe has a gift guide up with cookbooks on it because I can oh, see some people asking. And I'm putting one up, I think this week. Yes. Um, started one. So we will have cookbook recs for you on our yeah. blog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, Tamika has a great question. Speaking of folks that are, um, you know, getting getting into the kitchen and having fun with, um, with baking and cooking, uh, wanting to start baking. And this will be my first cookbook. What are the baking tools must haves? Oh, that's a good question. Um, a rolling pin is great. If you can afford a stand mixer, that is a great tool to have. Um, I use mine constantly. Um, I really like having a pastry brush for just dusting doughs, dusting the flour off of doughs. I use that a lot. Um, so you can, oh, a kitchen scale is mm -hmm. like a great tool. And I have mine here. This, I have, Zoe has this one too, a link to it, but it's a I great it scale. You, you recommended it. Uh, me. I love it. Yeah, I did. It's a great scale. Those are like my super essentials. Do you have anything to add, Zoe? Well, I'm sure you have I a would million. say a Good super bowl. essential. The what? Oh, bowls. I said the bowls, spatulas. Those are great yeah, tools. Yeah, I would say rubber spatulas yeah. um, are like, I have one in my hand pretty much 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> scraping the bowl with a rubber spatula, I do more than any other activity in my life. <laughs> I, love yeah. the, I love that. Oh my gosh. And then oh. a with pockets is also really nice. So you can have a phone yeah, pocket. So I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. I have to say, like scraping a bowl with a rubber spatula is like, yeah, also one of the most satisfying things for me. Yeah. I just, like uh, love being able to get every last yes. drop. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so glad you said that because people I feel like it's tedious for people, but maybe not. I find it meditative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just like, I'm making something delicious and I want all of it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay. We have some more comments coming through. Um, uh, Lara says, my teenage son gave me the 100 cookies cookbook for my birthday and he picks a new recipe for me to try almost every week. 
He's not oh. baking himself, but he loves to eat my baked treats and we've both got <laughs> recipes. Now we're diving into the holiday baking book and his favorite so far is the crumb coffee cake. It's Ooh. so fantastic. Thank you. Oh, that's so um, awesome. That's thanks awesome. so much for sharing that, Laura. That's cool. Really I love that. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm just browsing through, making sure there were no other ones that we missed. There were so many fantastic um questions unfortunately we won't have time to get to all of them um but i think we got to a good amount let me see if i can find one more good one. are the questions saved on here because i could also on instagram um, oh that's fantastic try to answer them too they won't, won't be saved but um i think that folks can dm you Yes. Yeah, you could DM me there and I can answer in my stories and try to answer all your questions because I don't want to like not leave any. I'm sorry okay. you froze. Oh, he will not leave anyone hanging. Our internet connection is unstable. Well, that may just be our cue to wrap things up <laughs> for the okay. night. <laughs> before we lose you again Sarah um on on behalf of everyone here I think I can speak on behalf of everyone here and say um it was just such a pleasure to chat with uh, both of you tonight to learn more about uh baking for the holidays and get really just excited about all the delicious treats that we're gonna make this season um so happy that both of you could join us tonight um so Thank, thank you. you. Thank for taking you. the time. Thank, thank you so much. Everybody. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you. And thank you everyone for coming and listening. And you are all amazing and wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank have you, Zoe. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see, see you night. later. Have a good night, Bye. everyone. Happy baking. Happy holidays. <laughs>